Look at this lovely looking man, very handsome. Why would he be concerned about his skin? Well, most men are very vain. Everybody wants to look their best. I have worked on many models and film stars in my career. I used to be the uh, resident makeup artist for the House of Revlon in New York back in the 1960s. I've worked on people like Barbara Streisand and some of the major people. Nobody is happy with their skin. Nobody's happy with what they look like. Everybody finds something wrong. I think this is a very nice looking man, but for some reason, he wanted this peel. peel. He begged for it, right, Andrew? He wanted this peel. You probably thought he was crazy, but he wanted it. Now, what you're about to see, see is more dramatic than probably what you're going to get. You will not get a peeling like this on Caucasian skin. The darker the skin, the heavier the peeling. Blue eyes, blonde hair, gets a very light flaking or a very light peeling. Uh, very, very little. Maybe like the lady that we saw that had those major blemishes. It varies on everyone. This is very, very dramatic. <coughs> he did have four applications. A side view. Now here he is afterwards. I mean, he looks just as good, just as handsome. But you do have to admit that his skin is absolutely beautiful. Remember, he's very young. There wasn't that much to improve. You can imagine what this does on older people like you, like people that are 40, 50, 60. This is a picture miracles. of a very famous model in the States. Seen him on the cover of Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Mademoiselle, Town and Country. No. I was doing a peeling one day at home, and I just happened to, before it even started the peel, I took my hands, I was looking in the bathroom mirror, and I did this, and I saw how my face crumpled up and how dry it was and I looked at this area here and I could see it just is probably about the next morning it was starting to peel and of course you could see the difference between this could have been the second day for all I know maybe my face didn't start to peel till two days later as you could see from the color of my beard uh, this was taken a few years ago but notice how red the skin does turn as compared to my hands so it does add a lot of coloring to the so, skin. So my second note on here, it's not glycolic acid. If you want to make a one-line note. Uh, there is no facial treatment on the day of the peeling. I explained why. It would cause some aggravation to the skin. Uh, when the skin begins to peel, like you saw on the uh, gentleman where the big piece was hanging off, or where uh, Betty uh, St. Martin, uh, the uh, dark-skinned woman, it was peeling away from her mouth. You never grab the skin and pull it. You must make sure that your client knows you never pull it. What that gentleman should have done, and what Betty St. Martin did, she took a little cuticle scissor, and that's what I always would teach. You take a cuticle scissor or a little scissor, and you cut it very close. But when you pull on it, you leave red skin underneath. And then it could turn out to be, uh, it takes longer to heal. It can remain red for weeks. Um, I mean, I did it to myself once. I had a wedding to go to. My skin, there were no sores. Uh, there was no uh, oozing of any kind. But I had a very blotchy face for about the next five or six days. Because I took a cream, put it on my face, and I just massaged it until I just massaged everything loose. It was probably Vaseline or something or cold cream uh, because I wanted to hasten it. And after lecturing for so many years that you don't do it, I did it. And the best way for you to find out about this treatment is to give one to yourself. If an area starts to peel before you put on, like around the mouth, the third or the fourth application, go right over it. The formula is so unique, it cannot peel beyond the epidermis. It cannot peel away the dermis at all. I've never seen it peel the dermis. You remove as much as you can with the spatula. It's almost like shaving somebody. Let me 
just won't. Just want to sanitize my hands here one more time. It usually does not dissolve with cleansing creams or lotions. It's too thick of a, uh, an ointment. But I very often, when I want to clean the face, will do the following. And you can try this. You know, sometimes if the product is cold or there's a lot of air conditioning in the room, it doesn't come off quite as easy as it did just now. You saw how easy it came off. And all I'd have to do now is just take a cleansing pad and go over it. But I sometimes take just some petroleum jelly. I brought this from the States, and I've never seen the brand before. We usually just buy jars of, you know, just like you do here, of petroleum jelly. But somebody gave me a few tubes of this, and it's all the same. It's just Vaseline. I like to very often just take some Vaseline, like this. Remember how I told you just put it on your fingers and apply it to the skin and just work it in very nicely. And what the Vaseline does, that the cleanser doesn't, it really does dissolve because it's so greasy Vaseline that it dissolves the grease underneath. Like nail polish will dissolve nail polish. Paint will dissolve paint if you leave it on long enough. And you just work it in. Somebody in the room, a lady right over here sitting in this beautiful blonde woman at the end of the aisle here, asked how she can get a copy of my book. And Drew said that uh, the company will have the book available. Just another fabulous product you could get from Skin Culture Institute. We tried to have them here, and it was very difficult getting them in on time. But they will be available, so you can call in a couple of weeks. Wet cotton pad. Be careful around the eyes. You don't want to get this in their eye. By the way, if you do get it in their eye, they go blind, but their sight will return within a year or so. No, it's, uh, if it gets in the eye, it's just like soap that gets in the eye. It would, be, it would burn and smart, but the tears of the eyes usually just wash it right out. I will tell you this, and it almost sounds unbelievable. Uh, which makes it so much nicer than a liquid. You know, there are peeling products on the market that are liquid. Well, even the glycolic acids, the alpha hydroxy acids for the salon, is in a liquid. You apply it with um, um, Q-tips or something. I mean, it can always run in the eyes or up the nostrils. I have never, since 1970, ever, ever had this product get in anyone's eye. And the reason is, it just doesn't move. It's a heavy thing, wherever you put it. It can only get in the eye if you took the stick and put it in the eye. <laughs> That's the only way it's going to get there, is if you put it there. Look up at the ceiling, please. See how nicely that comes off? Call in a couple of weeks. Wet cotton pad. Be careful around the eyes. You don't want to get this in their eye. By the way, if you do get it in their eye, they go blind, but their sight will return within a year or so. No, it's a uh, if it gets in the eye, it's just like soap that gets in the eye. It would be, it would burn and smart, but the tears of the eyes usually just wash it right out. I will tell you this, and it almost sounds unbelievable. 
uh, which makes it so much nicer than a liquid. You know, there are peeling products on the market that are liquid. Well, even the glycolic acids, the alpha hydroxy acids for the salon, is in a, a liquid. You apply it with um, um, Q-tips or something. I mean, it can always run in the eyes or up the nostrils. I have never, since 1970, ever, ever had this product get in anyone's eye. And the reason is, it just doesn't move. It's a heavy thing, wherever you put it. It can only get in the eye if you took the stick and put it in the eye. <laughs> That's the only way it's going to get there, is if you put it there. Look up at the ceiling, please. See how nicely that comes off? 